Hey everyone, welcome to No Ideas Media. I'm Nick Syke and we all just need to breathe for a second when we were yelling about glyphosate. Did you know the guy who invented Roundup won the US's highest technical honor, the National Medal of Technology and Innovation? I mean, everyone knows the use of this evil chemical keeps rising. Profits are good, even if its reputation isn't. So what, did Monsanto just use those profits to buy off the jury for this prize? Well, it turns out they didn't have to. Here's why. John E. Franz has over 800 patents to his name. Originally hired as Monsanto's resident chemist, he started with a series of safer fire retardants. But get this, he changed departments when he learned that Monsanto's agricultural division had an emphasis on publishing, academic contacts, and the freedom to pursue ideas. See, applied science has immediate sales applications, which means businesses can deduct those research and development expenses against the profit they create. When we buy and use the products made from an invention, it pays for the R&D. But pure science doesn't have an obvious purpose, so it makes businesses understandably nervous. It tends to be expensive and they can never be sure they'll get that money back. Despite this reality, many important practical discoveries have been stumbled upon when doing pure science. Franz respected the company's need to make a profit to pay his salary so he could pay his mortgage, but he had great big ideas and he wanted to work in one of those rare corporations that also respects the value of pure science. Monsanto provided that freedom, and that led Franz to, at 41 years old, discover and invent glyphosate. And you can bet he was pretty happy about it too. It was not only going to make his boss extremely happy, it was actually a major discovery and invention for him as a scientist. So some context here. Why do farmers even use pesticides? Well, for the same reason that plants make their own. Remember. Nature's not peaceful, it's a daily war for survival. Bugs and diseases don't read stop signs or stop at fence lines. Organic farmers and conventional farmers know that without pesticides, plants have fewer defenses against the competing species that will consume them. A good example in nature is magic mushrooms. The magic is psilocybin, which is a chemical that deters some of the bugs that would otherwise eat the mushrooms. But doesn't always deter humans. So yes, kids at music festivals are literally getting high on an organic pesticide designed by a fungi to protect itself from insects. It's literally organic, psychedelic, fungi, bug repellent. Farmers use pesticides because humans are competing with bugs and animals and diseases and invasive species that all want the energy in our food supply. All creatures protect the tools used to get their food. I mean, porcupines have spikes to protect the body they use to forge with, squirrels hide their nuts, lions and cheetahs protect their claws because those are their vehicles, weapons, butchers and chefs. Uh, humans need large amounts of food, so our most trustworthy method of protecting our food is to use safety-tested pesticides. And only when other measures fail. Contrary to popular belief, no farmer wants to spray a pesticide. That's cutting into your profit margin. But there's no way to escape our participation in nature's battle for survival. I mean, even pulling weeds technically makes us a pest to those invasive species we're pulling. Anything can be a pest to anything. But why glyphosate? Farmers live on the land with their families, so no one is more concerned about toxicity than they are. They also want something that works and is relatively concentrated or they'll be spending too much money and time on spraying mostly water. To sell product, Monsanto, Syngenta, Dow DuPont, BASF, and Bayer are all competing by trying to better each other's products in terms of safety and cost to benefit ratios. The winning products are the ones that combine safety, efficacy, and cost effectiveness because an incorporated family farm is still someone's home, while also being an important small business whose products literally feed the world. It's a balancing act, and unsafe, poorly performing, overly expensive pesticides would throw that balance off entirely. 
So if a farmer is looking for a safe, effective, and cheap pesticide, they might turn to something like copper sulfate. Copper sulfate is one of the more popular pesticides still used in organic farming, and it has an LD50 of 30 milligrams per kilogram. Little side note, LD50 means lethal dose for 50% of the population. It's a way that we measure toxicities. So if you ingested 30 milligrams per kilogram of your weight, you would have a 50-50% chance of dying. But that's still a relatively large amount, so it's still extremely safe. You'd need to get a lot of it every day to get sick. But comparatively, glyphosate is quick to biodegrade, it doesn't bioaccumulate, and its LD50 is like 5,600 milligrams per kilogram. It's safer and it's more effective. That's how you sell a lot of pesticide. No need to buy anyone off, you just show that it works better. And in the end, the answer for glyphosate's huge sales are entirely logical. It's simply a reflection of the fact that it is safer than almost every organic or synthetic pesticide used before its invention. My parents' generation were dealing with much worse chemicals to do the same job. And once you know the facts, it's easy to see that Monsanto didn't need to buy Johnny e. Franz the National Medal of Technology and Innovation. He won it, and a bunch of other awards Fair and square. Far from the shadowy, evil, behind-the-scenes villain of modern Monsanto lore, Johnny e. Franz is in the National Inventors Hall of Fame precisely because his work managed to help the environment, all while also making farmers and consumers safer. Thanks a lot, Monsanto. Now, a good portion of the world lives off the achievements of people like Franz. No matter where he would have ended up working, his invention was a step forward for both mankind and the environment. I wanted to relate this little counterpoint to the glyphosophobia we're always hearing about. Cue the trolls, I gotta go deal with them now because I said a not mean thing about glyphosate. Until next time, be pragmatic, not dramatic. Yeah.